Have you ever sat down at a family dinner and noticed how people argue over which is better, chicken breast or steak? Some swear by the lean protein of chicken, while others can't live without the bold flavor of beef. But when you really think about it, what actually makes one type of meat white and the other red? The answer goes deeper than just appearance. It's a mix of biology, nutrition, culture, and history. In today's video, we're going to explore what's the difference between white meat and red meat. We'll uncover the science behind their color, the health pros and cons, and even how culture shaped the way we eat them, right here on History of Simple Things. The most obvious difference between white and red meat is, well, the color. Steak, lamb, and pork chops usually look darker, while chicken breast and turkey breast are pale in comparison. But this difference isn't random. It comes down to a protein called myoglobin. Myoglobin lives inside animal muscles and stores oxygen, kind of like a backup tank for when the muscles need extra fuel. The more active a muscle is, the more myoglobin it contains and the darker its color becomes. Think about it. Chickens don't use their breast muscles for long-distance endurance. They mostly use them for quick bursts of flight. That's why chicken breast is low in myoglobin and looks white. Their legs, though? They're constantly walking and scratching around, so those muscles have more myoglobin, giving dark meat that deeper, richer color. On the other hand, animals like cows, pigs, and sheep use their muscles regularly for walking, standing, and supporting body weight. Their muscles are loaded with myoglobin, so the meat naturally comes out redder. That's the fundamental difference. It's not about the animal, it's about how those muscles are built and used. Now that we know the color difference, the next big question is, what does this mean for nutrition? Is one healthier than the other? Red meat is typically higher in iron, zinc, and vitamin B12, thanks to its high myoglobin content. This is great for energy, brain function, and preventing anemia. Red meat also packs more creatine and certain amino acids, which help with muscle building and repair. That's why athletes often include lean beef in their diet. White meat, on the other hand, is generally lower in fat and calories. Chicken and turkey breast are considered lean protein sources because they deliver a lot of protein without the same levels of saturated fat you'd find in a ribeye steak or pork belly. That's why health professionals often recommend white meat for people who want to keep cholesterol levels in check. Of course, not all cuts are created equal. A skinless chicken breast and fried chicken wings are technically both white meat, but one is clearly healthier than the other. Same goes for red meat. Lean cuts like sirloin or tenderloin are much better for you than heavily marbled fatty cuts. So when it comes to health, the cut and preparation matter just as much as whether it's red or white. For decades, Red meat has had a bad reputation. Studies linked it to heart disease, cancer, and other health issues, which made people lean heavily toward chicken, turkey, or even plant-based protein. But the reality is more nuanced. The health risks often come from processed red meats, things like bacon, sausages, hot dogs, and deli meats. These are loaded with preservatives, sodium, and nitrates that can increase health risks. Fresh, unprocessed red meat when eaten in moderation doesn't carry the same level of danger. White meat, meanwhile, has been branded the safe option. But even that isn't bulletproof. Frying, over-seasoning, or eating only poultry while ignoring variety in your diet isn't ideal either. At the end of the day, Balance is the key. Nutritionists agree that both red and white meat can be part of a healthy diet, as long as you're mindful of portions and preparation. 
Let's be honest. Health aside, most of us choose meat based on flavor. And this is where the difference between white and red meat really hits the taste buds. Red meat has a richer, stronger flavor thanks to its higher fat content and myoglobin levels. That's why steak tastes so savory and lamb has that bold, earthy kick. White meat, on the other hand, has a milder flavor that absorbs marinades and seasonings easily. A chicken breast might taste bland on its own, but season it well, and it can carry almost any flavor profile. Texture plays a role too. Red meat tends to be denser and chewier, while white meat, especially chicken breast, can be tender but also dries out quickly if overcooked. This explains why many people prefer chicken thighs. They're technically dark meat with more fat and flavor, making them juicier. These days, the red versus white debate has gotten more complicated with the rise of plant-based alternatives. Products like Beyond Meat or Impossible Burger mimic the taste and even the color of red meat using plant ingredients like soy and beet juice. People are questioning whether we even need meat categories anymore if we can replicate them without animals. At the same time, more consumers are becoming interested in how their meat is raised, whether it's free-range chicken, grass-fed beef, or hormone-free pork. The focus is shifting from just red versus white to quality, ethics, and sustainability. Science is also introducing lab-grown meat, real meat made from cells without raising animals. Though still costly, it could redefine how we see food. In the future, the debate over red versus white meat may fade, replaced by questions of sustainability and innovation. At its core, the difference between white and red meat comes down to myoglobin, the protein that gives muscles their color. Red meat delivers more iron and bold flavor, while white meat offers leaner protein with fewer calories. Both can be healthy if eaten in moderation, and both have shaped cuisines worldwide. So the next time you're choosing between chicken or steak, remember, it's less about color and more about balance, variety, and enjoying the meal. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.